I'll be doing a low buy year in 2022 in an effort to curb my spending and change some of my patterns of behaviour. There are a few things I want to achieve at the end of my low buy year. I want to reach all my money goals as outlined in my video. I want to be less dependent on the acquisition of new things as my primary source of joy. I want to appreciate the things that I have. I want to use up what I already have. I want to redirect my focus from shopping to more meaningful pursuits and experiences. I want to change my psychology around shopping and my emotions of desperation around the acquisition of new things. And I want to reduce the frequency of buyer's remorse or at least the intensity of the regret by detaching myself from the high of purchasing a new item. There are a few shopping behaviours that I'm guilty of and that I want to overcome. I have a tendency to scroll on shopping sites looking for something to want or to buy. I'm prone to impulse purchases. Many times I buy things I didn't intend to purchase because of a good deal or because I think it is expected social behaviour. This is not so much a shopping behaviour as it is a certain mindset, and that is the idea that buying new things can solve a problem for which the solution is not the item itself. For instance, if I'm feeling particularly awful about a pimple on my face, the solution is not to overhaul my entire skincare routine and buy completely new products. What I should be doing is treating the pimple with the spot treatments that I know will work and basically just giving my skin time to heal. I understand my panicked reaction and the act of shopping tricks my brain into thinking that I'm doing something to solve the problem, but really what I need is time and also to be kinder to myself. This is a fundamental lesson that I truly want to bring into my life, which is that I cannot buy my way out of a problem. As for the rules of my low buy, a low buy year is a variation of the no buy year, so I'm not committing to not buying anything fun or frivolous in 2022. I want to give myself a bit of breathing room. So what I'll do is give myself a strict budget every single month. Here is how it will go. Every month, I will have a budget of $50 to spend on things that are considered not essential. I will refer to this sum of money as my sinking fund. However, I'm not allowed to spend that $50 until the 25th of the month. Let's call this my spending window. If I don't spend my $50 or if I have leftover money by the end of the month, I can roll over that money into the next month. Money accumulated in the sinking fund can be used at any time during the spending window. For example, let's say I have $30 from my sinking fund in January. I'm allowed to bring over that extra $20 into February, which means I'll now have a total of $70 in my sinking fund for February that I can spend. Assuming I don't spend my $50 a month for the entire year of 2022, I will have $600 worth of sinking fund money that I have assigned myself as money to spend for my frivolous pleasure. Also, at the end of every month, if I have a balance of unspent money, I will move all this money into my sinking fund as well. Here is a list of what I'm allowed to spend on. Fixed expenses and transport. Dining out. One caveat is that I'm only allowed to buy a drink outside, like bubble tea, if I'm with somebody like family or friends. Groceries and household necessities. However, these items are to be purchased on a replacements-only basis. I can only purchase a replacement if there is no longer an alternative that can fulfill that particular purpose. For example, I won't be buying different variations of black teas, coffees, toothpaste or shampoo. Anything that is required for my immediate health and safety. Medical bills. Therapy. Mum's allowance. Joint account with partner. Gifts for friends and family. Entertainment subscriptions like my Spotify, Netflix and Disney+. Plus. Tool subscriptions, like my Google One. Resources for learning and education. Necessary spending for my work or for my YouTube project. Gift cards from others. The caveat on gift cards is that it should always be prioritized to buy things that need to be replaced first whenever possible. For example, if I receive a generic mall voucher, it should go to household groceries and necessities first. But if I receive a bookstore voucher for a specific bookstore that only sells books, then I'm allowed to purchase a book with that voucher. Here is the list of what I'm not allowed to spend on until the 25th of the month. Apps and app subscriptions, books, clothes and jewellery, electronics, garden things and plants, hobby things, home decor, non-essential home tools, personal care, sports and exercise equipment, and anything that is not from the allowed list. The replacement only rule applies to personal care products as well. And that's it for the rules of my low buy. 
I've already been putting some of these rules into practice for the last two months so that I can mentally prepare myself for the new year. I have a couple friends who are keeping me accountable to this, and before I make any purchase with my sinking fund, I promise to call them and tell them about it before I actually go through with the purchase. Getting some friends on board to keep you accountable to your goals is a good idea if you think you'll need the extra support. As part of this project and for accountability as well, I'm going to do monthly check-ins on what I spend on during the month. I've written a non-exhaustive list of things that I want to do to fill the time that I would usually spend browsing, shopping websites or actually shopping. There is no guarantee that I'll be successful in completely distracting myself from shopping behaviours, but I just wanted to make this list to remind myself that there are so many other things that I can do besides spending money or thinking about bringing new things into my life. I can read a book from my reading list, watch a film from my to-watch list, journal about why I want that particular item and analysing what this desire represents in my life, I can listen to my favourite music albums and meditate on the bit, I can work on my YouTube channel, I can declutter a category in my life, I can start an embroidery project, I can redecorate or reorganise a section in my house, and the list goes on. One of the biggest appeals of the low buy or the no buy year to me is the possibility of retraining my brain to be less hyper-consumerist and to feel less like I need more things or new things to feel fulfilled. Many of the YouTubers I've watched who documented their journey with this project have said something of that nature. I'll include in the description a couple of my favourite YouTubers who did or are doing the no buy year. I think it'll be a good reflective exercise for myself as well, and I'll try to pay attention to when that knee-jerk reflexive emotion to buy things emerges. Retail therapy is not real therapy. I am paying for real therapy and I know the difference. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.